We're taking a close look now at what has and hasn't happened in one of the main legislative calls from Uvalde families one year after a gunman killed 19 children and two teachers armed with an AR-15 style weapon. Now, families of victims and survivors have come to the state capitol very often this session demanding tighter gun laws to prevent someone like the Uvalde gunman from obtaining such weapons. As our Monica Madden reports, the majority of their calls fell flat, but it doesn't mean they're giving up the fight. I want to honor her life, her legacy with action. Parents Kim and Felix Rubio never imagined becoming activists. I was perfectly content with just being a mom of five children in a small town. Their contentedness ripped away by an 18-year-old gunman who killed their youngest daughter, Lexi. Last year. One year ago at Robb Elementary School. Lexi didn't deserve this. None of those children did. Those two teachers didn't. In the last year, pain has fueled their fight. At the nation's capital. Pleas and protests from Uvalde families helped push rare federal action on gun laws. This effort was about the art of the possible. Senator John Cornyn led the passage of the Safer Communities Act. It created a seven-day review process for the FBI to check firearm purchases for those under the age of 21 and clarified requirements for federally licensed firearm dealers. We've seen a 52 percent increase in federal prosecutions for unlicensed firearms dealers. Is there more to be done? As policymakers, we ought to always be open to suggestions that uh, people have about how to make it, how to save lives. Republicans like Cornyn have expressed there is a line. We haven't figured out how to stop all of them, uh, but I'm, I'm confident that the answer is not uh, to deprive law-abiding gun owners of their constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Loose gun laws have allowed guns to proliferate to anybody and everybody. State Senator Roland Gutierrez, a Democrat who represents well, Uvalde, no, no, no. wants a different approach. We have to start looking at the common denominator, which is too many guns in too many wrong hands. Holding regular press conferences with Uvalde families, he made guns his top issue this session. You know, I've been all about this session about protecting children, my friend, and we haven't done a whole lot of protecting the children when it comes to guns and ammunition. A doomed effort from the start with strong opposition in a Republican-dominated state. They didn't shatter any expectations for me. I pretty much knew what we were looking at going into this thing, but I felt like we needed to have the discussion. None of his bills got a hearing, but in the House... <laughs> The bill proposing to raise the age limit for purchasing semi-automatic weapons advanced out of committee. Two Republicans voted yes just days after another mass shooting in Allen. It's a reminder that change is possible to see some sort of progress. It meant the world to me. While that bill never got a floor vote. I think next time around we'll be better prepared. Families like the Rubios are not giving up. We'll get what we wanted, but we still won't have Lexi. And that was, that was hard. That'll, that'll be a hard day. And that was Monica Madden reporting.